January, February, June, and July. How many months must pass me by? Winter, spring, summer, fall. When, oh, when will my true love call? Jane Eyre. Do you hear me, Jane Eyre? Mother says you're a dependent. That's one of Father's books. It doesn't belong to you. I'll teach you a lesson. Lock her in the red no, room. No, please, not the red room. It's haunted. Oh, please, don't make me go in there. No, please, please. This is a story. A story that happened almost 200 years ago. The world was very different then, but people do not change all that much. They still long for the same things. Sometimes those things are very simple. Sometimes they are difficult to describe. As in the case of Jane Eyre, it is a story that I know well. Jane Eyre was authored by Charlotte Bronte and published in 1847 under the pen name Cure Bell. Starting life as an orphan, Jane encounters oppression, cruelty, and great hardship. Throughout the story, we see this intelligent and honest young woman fight for her right to dignity, opportunity, and love, regardless of social class or gender. During the Victorian era in which it was written, Jane Eyre was truly revolutionary. It continues to be influential and to capture the imaginations of audiences around the world. There have been many different dramatic adaptations of Jane Eyre and no less than six films in the last 90 years. What I liked about this particular adaptation of Jane Eyre, written by Thomas Hishak, is that it allowed for three different actresses to play the role of Jane at three different stages in her life. Jane as a child is played by Erica Arndt, Jane as a young woman is played by Reese Lochner, and Jane as a more mature woman reflecting on her life experiences is played by Ariana Antonson. Jane's life begins as an orphan being raised by an aunt who disdains and resents Jane and her strong-willed, passionate personality. Should you admit her into Lowood School, I should be glad if the teachers were requested to keep a strict eye on her. She has a tendency to deceit. Indeed, a sat fault in the child. Young Jane is sent to an institution where the children are very poorly treated, malnourished, and cruelly punished. However, Jane finds her first true friend there, an older student named Helen, who becomes very influential in her life. This friendship and the gentle guidance of her teacher, Miss Temple, changes Jane's heart and helps her grow in knowledge and faith. By the time she turns 18, she is a well-educated teacher at the school. However, her life and the story takes a very different turn when she accepts a position as a governess at Thornfield Hall and meets the formidable Mr. Rochester. Sit, Miss Eyre, here where I can see your face. I examined these drawings of yours while I waited for the doctor. They're very revealing. I am no great artist. Oh, blast great artists. I've seen the greatest art all around the world, and I don't pretend to say what great art is. But those pictures tell me a very intelligent and forthright person has done them. Am I right? I could not say. Oh, you dare not say. I think you mean. Oh, you examined me, Miss Eyre. I did not mean to stare. Oh, you weren't. Tell me, since you've studied my face, as an artist does, do you find it handsome? No, sir. <laughs> There's something singular about you. I didn't mean that- Oh, yes, you did. Don't deny it. I meant to say that such a question requires more than an impromptu reply. Beauty is of little consequence. What lies under- I like your first is... response better. Tell me, what fault do you find with my face? Has it not all the features of any other man? Two eyes, one nose, a sour mouth filled with sour words. And what about my forehead? Doesn't it please you? Sir, I would like to disown my first answer. You interest me, Miss Jane Eyre. Though you are not pretty any more than I am handsome, you're puzzling, and it makes you attractive. I fear I am quite simple and plain. I don't mean to puzzle. What are you wondering right now? Be honest. Well... I was wondering if perhaps you've had too much wine and are making fun of me. Am I drunk, do you mean? No, Miss Eyre. That is not among my many faults. Have they not told you of my faults? Moody, bad-tempered, abrupt with servants, and soggy with acquaintances. I'm a very difficult person, I hear. I've heard none of those things. Well, then you have not been paying attention. I'm a restless man. I do not like Thornfield, yet I'm drawn to it. I'm anxious to leave it. 
I have no place I wish to go. Miss Eyre, have you ever loved someone or something so passionately that it destroyed you inside? No. Good. I would not wish it on my most bitter enemy. My leg is hurting again. Perhaps you should go. Yes, Mr. Rochester. Tend your pupil well, Miss Eyre. Yes, sir. She has no one but me in the world, poor creature. Send Mrs. Fairfax in. This blasted leg needs some ice. With the introduction of Mr. Rochester, a very untraditional romance began in Jane's life. That I never should! How can you suppose such a thing? Do you think I have no feelings at all? What kind of a machine do you think I am? That because I am poor, obscure, and plain, I am also to be soulless and heartless? You are wrong to think so. I have as much soul and as much heart. And if God had gifted me with some beauty and much wealth, it should have made it as hard for you to leave me as it is now for me to leave you. But even without those things, I'm in God's eyes your equal and all the same. So you are, Jane. And I cannot keep teasing you any longer. I offer you my hand, my heart, and a share of all my possessions. It is you that I love. Say you will marry me, Jane. But a terrible secret from Mr. Rochester's past threatens to ruin their lives. It was to be a small wedding held in the chapel in two weeks' time. Mr. Rochester presented me with a long lace veil made in France, but it was not becoming on me, so I accepted it as a gift and saved it as a token of his love. I did not sleep soundly the night before the wedding, nor did I expect to, being so full of thoughts about the next day. But when I drifted off, I again dreamed I saw Thornfield in flames. And again, I saw Mr. Rochester running through the burning rooms looking for someone. Was it me? I tossed and turned and then suddenly awoke. At least, I think I awoke. Perhaps it was another dream. I saw a figure of a woman moving through my room. She paced back and forth. Then she stopped when she saw the lace veil Mr. Rochester had given to me. She lifted it up. And then I heard that familiar and awful laugh. Then suddenly... <laughs> of course it was all a dream, or so I thought. But when I awoke the next morning, on my bed lay the veil, ripped into two pieces. Mademoiselle, where are you, Miss Eyre? Blanche Ingram is a special favorite of Mr. Rochester's. These governesses, half of them detestable, and the rest ridiculous. I knew you would do me good. I knew it the first time I set eyes on you, Jane. If the door was not bolted, it would best to do I so. I you accept me as a husband. It is you that I love. This man and this woman holding This match. marriage cannot go on. I declare an impediment. This ceremony is quite broken off. That could not stop me. Given the choice, I would do it again. You are my whole life, Jane. What is your name? Jane! Do you Jane. have any family? Jane! 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 Jane. What Jane. is your name? Jane! Can you speak? This is my story. And mine. And mine. This is the story of Jane Eyre. Mm -hmm.